What's up guys, Mark First Center here with Android Police and we're here in beautiful Mountain View, California for Google I.O. 2016. We saw a lot of cool stuff this morning at the keynote. The biggest thing that was really the most far reaching was Google Assistant. And Google Assistant is kind of like the newest version of Google if you think about it that way. Google Assistant is the next iteration, the next evolution of the natural language processing and really intense deep learning that Google's machines can do. Google Assistant is now more aware of your context than it ever has been before. And what exactly that means is that your phone is gonna be able to use the data that's available to it to be able to fill in the gaps in your life. So, the example that Sundar Pichai used when he was on stage was, if you're in Chicago at The Bean and you ask your phone, who designed this? Your phone will actually have the correct answer if you're running the most recent version of Google Assistant. So where else could Google Assistant be like really useful? At home, right? Yeah, you have your phones at home, but it's not always the most convenient. In fact, it's often not the most convenient to whip out your phone and ask it a question. Well, Google Home is here to solve that problem for you, or at least according to Google. This device has Sonos functionality and Amazon Alexa functionality built in, or Amazon Echo if you want to name things correctly. Google Home will answer any of your questions thanks to a far, far reaching mic that can listen to you from across the room. Google Home will also be able to handle things like tasks, calendar events, things of that nature, anything that Amazon's Echo already does for the most part. It's a beautiful looking device too. You can actually swap out the bottom piece of it with any color or material you want to match your home decor. We don't have a lot in terms of release dates just yet. Google did say fall of this year, but we don't know exactly when we're gonna see a Google Home for ourselves. Google Allo, or Allo, mate is their new chat client. And I know we didn't exactly need another messaging client from Google, but we've got one, so let's deal with it, okay? So it's got Google Assistant built in, and that's the really cool part about it. While you're having conversations with your friends and family, Google Assistant can chime in with really helpful stuff, like quick replies, and quick replies that can actually pay attention to what is inside of images that you're sent. Allo isn't just about the artificial intelligence though, it's also much better than Hangouts and basically anything else we've seen from Google when it comes to chat. There's a new feature called Whisper Shout, which lets you change the size of the text or whatever message it is that you're sending from larger to smaller. So you can say something really loudly without using caps lock and you can say something really quietly, which I guess just wasn't really possible before. The other side of Allo is Duo, and Duo is a video-focused app that is just for one-to-one -one video calls. Google noticed that there was a major problem with video calls. People weren't answering them. They have a ton of data to work off of, and you know what? Anecdotally, I can agree with that. When someone video calls me, I'm not trying to answer that right away. I don't know why you're calling me. What's your deal? Knock Knock, a new feature in Duo allows you to see the person who's calling you in real time, so you know why they're calling you. It gives you context. It's the same idea as giving Google more context about the questions we're asking. Give us more context to know whether or not we should answer this phone call. The cool thing is, since Google has so much experience with WebRTC, they actually made sure that the entire experience is totally seamless from start to finish. And in the demos, that's exactly what we saw. The phone rings, you see the other person on the other line, you answer the call, and suddenly they can see you too. It's really incredible. There's no latency in answering that call, and there's no lag. I'm excited to try both of these. We haven't gotten our chance to have our hands on them, of course, but the second we do, you better believe you're gonna be the first ones to know. I think they're gonna be pretty cool and pretty fun. I just wish they would kill the rest of the messaging apps. It's too much. I know a lot of us were excited to see what Google was up to when it comes to VR, but I was kind of disappointed. All we really got in terms of hardware were some design references, and that's about it, at least in terms of hardware. When it comes to software, we have a brand new experience called Daydream. Daydream is intended to be the sort of benchmark when it comes to VR. So devices can be Daydream compatible, Daydream enabled, Daydream ready, as long as they have the specs necessary to be able to support a great virtual reality experience, at least as it pertains to Google. Don't worry 
scary though, because most of the devices that we have in our pockets these days are already VR ready. Every major OEM is slated to create a device that's daydream ready in the coming year. So don't worry. The device that you love is going to be daydream ready at some point soon. It doesn't stop there though. Google went so far as to create their own home screen for their new virtual reality ecosystem. And inside of Daydream's home, you can actually access Google Play, YouTube, Street View, Google Play Movies. A lot of the experiences that you're used to on the Google ecosystem are all available in virtual reality in Daydream. Finally, Google hit us with a bit of a whammy. There's a new Android initiative focused around fast app installs. And no, I'm not just talking about the new compiler in Android N. I'm talking about instant app installs. Imagine that someone sends you a link to something like BuzzFeed Video or some app that you don't actually have installed. Well, normally the flow would look like you click on the link, you go to the site, you either watch the content there in a subpar experience, or if you want to have a positive experience, <laughs> You're not the first one, but f <laughs> Or you can go and download the app and then click on the link and have a native experience. Well, what if you didn't have to do either of those? What if you could click on the link and Android just knew what pieces of the app to download so that you could experience it as if you had the app? That's exactly what instant apps promise. Click on that link and instantly, you download just the piece of the app that you need to be able to display that content. And that entire piece is a full on experience. Now obviously that requires developers to be able to put the time in to make sure that they have modularized their app, so to speak. Effectively, they're gonna need to split out chunks of their app for the different use cases that they're gonna need so that we can download the appropriate one when necessary. When all is said and done, when it works correctly, it's a really, really cool feature. To be able to have access to a native experience without having to install an app is just huge. And it really did blow most of us at Android Police away. Sorry I wasn't around to do the last bit of this video on camera. As you can see, there were a ton of fun activities planned for the evening. We had a show by Kygo and Charlie XCX. So there's a whole lot more to come from here in Mountain View, California for IO 2016. Keep it stick tuned right here on Android Police for all of that great Android goodness. And as always, thank you all so, so much for watching. Be kind to one another, and I'll catch you in the next video.